cool. Ah, yeah, we are live right now, drawing for tattooers. We've got uh, Amber with us. It looks like Kyle Olson. Kyle, yay. So, yeah, excellent. Ah, everybody's, uh, the gang's all here, right? Everybody's showing up. That's awesome. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's um, God, it's Monday morning. It's, <laughs> it's almost uh, March. So believe it or not, I know we are uh, we're rolling right along. The the gear is flying by. Hey, Kyle. Good morning. Morning, James. Morning, Amber. Good morning, Kyle. How are you? Doing good. Slept okay. How about you guys? I slept. Yeah. But I don't know about okay. <laughs> <laughs> there was an effort made. Hello. Very much so. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, good morning. I'm having technical difficulties. Well, you sound you sound perfectly fine. So it's and we see yeah, you. So we you're see you. so you're here. <laughs> Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Yeah, and uh, hey, good morning to the chat. Hey, welcome, chat. Um, <laughs> I, I'm um, I'm gonna do these uh, morning announcements that I got to do. And then we'll um, we'll get to it today. So, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Guy Atchison's Reinventing the Tattoo Community, where tattooers, apprentices, collectors are all encouraged to join in these live stream and real world events. Um, our goal is to share, inspire, and ultimately create better art and tattoos together. Um, we beam out nearly every single day, and with your help, we've evolved into a quality network of amazing live and on demand tattoo and art shows that have been receiving rave reviews. You can learn more at reinventingthetattoo.com. Let me see if I can share the, the screen. That's, um, this is my cue to do that. So yeah, this one, share it. Boom, cool. Yeah, so here's uh, Reinventing the Tattoo homepage. Uh, and here you can find um, all sorts of links to educational content, um, as well as to the, all the programming that uh, that you can find on Reinventing the Tattoo. Um, looks like we have another paint night with Renee Little coming up. Uh, I really keep that. meaning to join in. Yeah, I, so Amber, I know that you do those. Those are, those are fun, right? Yes, we get onto all kinds of interesting conversations and Sometimes it's about art, sometimes it's about science, sometimes it's about philosophy, sometimes it's just about, you know, whatever's on your mind at the moment. It's, it's a lot of fun, and I tend to get a lot done. That's excellent. Yeah, no, I, I do, I enjoy watching them, so, um, yeah, I want to drop in. Uh, yeah, so here's the other ones. Uh, we've got a few other uh few other like uh programs that we have here on reinventing the tattoo um so we can start with them um, uh here over here we have a uh, skill building sunday with jason leaser uh, i believe that's at one at 1 p.m on sundays eastern uh yeah so uh that's followed on monday mornings at 9 a.m eastern drawing for tattooers that's this show you've, you've made it so yeah, you must know about it if you're here. So Monday mornings, 9 a.m., drawing for tattooers. Um, at uh, 11, we have the Tattoo Weekly, hosted by Lauren Gregory, uh, Jake Meeks, and Gabe Ripley. That's followed uh, at 5 p.m. on uh, Mondays with Let's Talk About Feelings with Robbie and Dusty. Um, episode number 30 already, oh my God. Um, it's amazing, yeah, it's just amazing ever watching everybody uh, progress and you know keep making all this really cool content um it is it's um it's it's a real community and so it's 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 just really cool to watch everybody you know do their thing um right so uh we also have um wednesdays at 1 p.m the tattoo now show and thursdays at 6 p.m the tattoo collecting 101 podcast hosted by fawn baker um, and then of course you can always, uh, you can always find, uh, our replays right here, whatever, keep loading. 
And then, of course, here's the event schedule where you can find uh, how to zoom into these uh, to these live events if you wish. Uh, and now, we'd like to take a moment and thank our sponsors. Um, Tattoo Now. Tattoo Now's technology is for tattooers, the leading edge in professional development, management, digital tools for tattoo artists of all levels. Uh, they have upgrades and mailing lists, as well as CRM software and professional development tools. Um, it's also a, a really cool gallery space where you can find all kinds of, you know, uh, tattoo art and tattoo artists. So um, yeah, check out Tattoo Now. It's a, it's a fantastic site. And uh, of course, um, wouldn't be uh, reinventing the tattoo without Guy Atchison. So we want to thank Guy Atchison for being the founder and inspiration behind the Reinventing the Tattoo uh, community. Um, you can learn more about Guy Atchison at guyatchison.com, where you can find uh, you can find original art as well as educational content and um, and even tattoo equipment. So um, yeah, be sure to be sure to check out uh, guyatchison.com. Um, but no matter where you're uh, you're seeing us, you can always find the latest and greatest at uh, reinventingthetattoo.com. Um, don't forget, uh, you can also learn uh, or you can also hear us on, uh, on all the major podcast directories, Apple, Spotify, um, as well as uh, you can find the Reinventing the Tattoo app in the App Store and the Google Play Store. So um, sign up for the community, get the app, um, you know, join up. Uh, you'll be glad that you did it. Uh, yeah, and I think I think that's that's good for those. So <laughs> anyway, all right, we got a couple uh, we got more people with us joining us here. We've got Stephen. Hey, Stephen. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys today? Doing uh, good. How about you, man? Well. Yeah. Good. I'm just kind of going for a walk this morning. Get a little fresh air today. Oh, nice. So, Anyway, awesome. Yeah, we've also got Spirit joining us. Hey, Spirit, how you doing? Doing great, uh, guys. How are you? A little more. Doing good. Yeah, yeah, it is. I'm having a morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I understand. Yeah. Once to come an afternoon too. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know what caused it, but here I am. Just good to see you. Glad to see you guys. Glad to have you here, man. Yeah, yeah, really glad you're here too. Yeah, it's. I mean, uh, this is so so interesting that you know, it's like not every day can be the the greatest day ever, right? Mm -hmm. Not every day can be the best day. Um, it's like contrast. Right? <laughs> contrast is all about difference and mm -hmm. you know if you have you're really going to have like some low days you're really going to have some bad times it's contrasted right you know that because you've had good ones right or there's good ones to come and i think um that's something that like it must be true you know what i mean like you you wouldn't yeah. otherwise you know it all, everything would be the same and level you know all the time yeah if you never I felt any pain are important yeah they're they're important to give you something to compare the good days to because it makes the good times all that much sweeter. yeah yeah i think that i think that must be true um so anyway no i'm, I'm just glad everybody is was here able is here able to make it with us today it's, um again we're like this is episode number number 40 um so yeah I'm, awesome. you know yeah yeah i'm not, <laughs> not like hold on we're not not celebrating <laughs> it was just sort of like just dawn i mean like oh my god it's like you know we've been doing this for a while and you know it'll, it'll be over a year you know before we know it so i'm i don't know i'm just really grateful for this opportunity and um i i feel like i'm learning you know all the time uh especially because I want to prepare for these, you know, these meetings and, you know, these sorts of, uh, these, this group, um, sort of forcing me to go back and review things, review, like, 
my materials that I have, and then also to review my own work. Um, look at it with a fresh perspective. Look at it, things with a critical eye. Um, and I and I just believe that that's where I'm I'm gaining so much, right? Because of just this, it's it's not always this forward progress. It's, mm. There's there is a circling back. It, it has it has to happen. Um, it's it's not constant. It's not constant forward progression. It's always progression, but sometimes there's a you know there's a bit of a you know circuitous movement, right? It's it's um that's how you prop. I mean, I imagine that's how that's how everybody has to grow, right? So yeah, um, and I think that because uh, um I, I'm in a place where I knew I would be. I knew I would be here. I prepared for it, but it's it doesn't. It, it's I'm still sad that I'm here and and where I'm at is um like this perfect example the Oni mask that I did was a great it was amazing but I had to tell myself I was like all right spirit don't get the big head and think that everything you produce from here on out is going to be on that level you know what I mean and I have absolutely produced things after that that my clients love but I'm just like ah <sighs> you know uh not quite satisfied with yeah and it's it's maddening you know it's like you, know, you climb a mountain and then the fog dissipates and you see you're just at the bottom of, the, of another bigger mountain mm -hmm. you know right. um it's almost like the better you get the harder things get and it's, it's it can be frustrating i i absolutely agree with you i think that's what that's what amber and i were just talking about before we started the show today was you know amber's amber's really progressing in her career is you know is working in a studio and amber you're getting your own your own space in the studio right it's that's happening nice. in the next you know very short while this nice. week i get my own workspace my my awesome. own station wonderful that's awesome but we were we were sort of like you know we were sort of reflecting on like well you know that's when the real hard work begins <laughs> you know? uh, as soon as you progress to this next stage you know it's like now the now the real work you know again it's all it's all real work but now it's the you know it just becomes even more challenging yeah i got more challenging than it was before the work i gotta do yeah, yeah. it's it's all yeah again it's i'm sorry it's all real work but but again, it's like it just—it becomes more complicated. It becomes yeah. more. There's more new. There's new challenges that are going to like sort of come out of the new challenges, know, um, new responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, new opportunities that I don't even see coming yet. So mm. of course, uh, yeah, I, I'm that's trying right. to continue to look at the positive. Yeah, and that's the thing, Amber. Um, I, th I just to kind of piggyback on that is. You know, I come from a long line of warriors and catastrophizers, uh, and I really had to kind of like change my thinking process into thinking because a lot of times when good things happen, we think, uh oh, you know, something bad is probably going to happen. But I've been changing my thought process to, you know, just to believe that, you know, just because something good is happening doesn't mean that something even better is not going to happen. Yeah, you know? I used to be a, a, a big warrior and, you know, doomsday and but i mm -hmm. found that when i think negatively i fulfill my own prophecy yeah it attracts yeah. that negativity into my personal bubble but mm -hmm. when i think positive i bring positive towards me mm. this whole opposite attract thing doesn't work when you're trying to you know bring positive things into your life you have to manifest that with positive energy Mm -hmm. Right. Well, um, yeah, I, I completely relate <laughs> to what you're all saying, and it's sort of a funny thing. It's it's like uh, you know, um, like some people are uh, you know they're really happy, you know, when on a cloudy day, right? <laughs> because you know it's it's gonna get sunny, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know. Um, I think it's, uh, uh, it can be, um, you can be also really sad on a sunny day, right? Cause you know, it's going to get cloudy. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, 
<laughs> it's it's easy to uh and maybe even intuitive right to sort of um you know to sort of recognize the uh the the rhythm right there you know there are going to be ups and downs and you know sort of how do you think positively i like what you said spirit about you know something something good is happening to you doesn't mean that something better isn't gonna happen at some point rather than you know right. being quite so uh quite so pessimistic right because <laughs> bad stuff is gonna happen you know right. i mean it just will but um but yeah, you know, you got to sit in it. You know, what I mean, you got to be with it, and it's it's where the you know, it's I think it's doing that is um, uh, uh, it's probably you know growing up and that sort of a thing. You know, so it can be a and it can be a positive thing. You know, being in the negativity because it can help you, uh, you know, become more grateful, appreciative, learn stuff. Yeah, gratitude um, has been really really amazing like i've really been practicing gratitude and just you know not being thankful for like oh my car but i mean just being thankful for my hair being thankful for the ground being thankful for gravity being thankful for the fact that i can breathe you know i mean and, and this is even when i'm in like my worst mood you know what i mean i'll just be thankful and just show gratitude and it, i mean if something happens in your brain when when you do that and um it's really, it's really something amazing. I, I, I invite everyone else to try that. Mm. Awesome. Well, um, so I, uh, I think what I really wanted to, to, to talk about today, again, you know, it was like sort of alluding to it before was um, review, right? Reviewing stuff, reviewing your work, reviewing the, you know, your, your your resources, right? Uh, gratitude, gratitude for your experience, and gratitude for the things that you that you can learn from. And so, um, I'm in the I'm in the uh, the reinventing course, and um, so what I've been doing is is reviewing, you know, reviewing that material because it's. It's kind of like it, it's kind of like saturation in a way, right? The more that you give it a pass, right? The more that you go over it, the more it saturates. The more that it becomes something that you can internalize and something that you can, um, I suppose, like uh, learn more from it. Um, and I've you know, and I've heard that that like you know, one of the greatest ways to learn is to try to teach, right? You want to like really learn about a subject, you try to teach it. Um, and so again, I think there's a, you know, whether or not you have a group to teach it to, you could still try to simplify the, you know, the concepts and try to um, try to make them relatable, intelligible to an audience. That's the way that I think you're going to have just a, a better grasp on anything that it is that's important to you. So um again i think uh i think that the um the thing that i want to do i i really want us to you know i want to progress um and so for the group i'm you know we're gonna start talking about color in you know next week <laughs> next week you know is gonna be the beginning of i want to start talking about color and i you know i want it to be i want to like try to lay the the, the groundwork for it but also we've been laying the groundwork for it, right? We've really been thinking yeah, about it. We've been talking theory. about what's color theory, right? It's um, uh, color is the, it's like a bonus, right? It's, we, you know, in order to see and understand anything, right? There's, of course, we've talked about all these ideas, point, line, plane, edge, value, right? textures these are sorts of uh these are subjects that all play into this idea of contrast right and contrast is all about difference um so in the you know in guy atchison's uh parlance and his language um talks a lot about positive negative or pos neg that's dark versus light 
I think we were talking about that today, right? With uh, just you know, with our emotions and with our experience, right? There's always there's there's always this this positive negative, you know, relationship. It's contrast. There's always going to be this contrast that helps us see difference because every moment is different than every other one. They are, even if they seem very similar, right? There's always there's always a difference. There's always a contrast. Some contrast is you know, is, is, is loudness, right? There's this very sharp distinction between, you know, what's in focus, what's in your foreground, what's in the background, right? Sometimes subtlety is key, right? Again, I think we're talking, we're talking more, you know, about more than just images, but, but certainly with your images, <laughs> right? Certainly with the images and the artwork that you make, right? You really have, uh, contrast is, is, is really a way of talking about value, right? And so um, as we start to get into color, right, you'll have another range of contrast that becomes at your disposal, right? And, you know, rather than talk about it too much here, you know, there are basic things that we can think about. Um, Complements, right? Complementary colors will be, you know, really come really important as well as temperature, right? Just a contrast of temperatures, warm versus cool, dark versus light, you know, again, all of the things that we've been talking about. So I'm, you know, I'm encourage everybody to, you know, to review, review your work, think about like some of the things that are, um, you know, some of the things that you're using, some of the things that, you know, if, if there's areas to improve, uh, you know, check out some of that. Um, but what I was, uh, what I was kind of hoping to do um, was to, was to again, like, you know, check out, uh, Check out some examples here, but let me uh, give me a second and I'll pull up. Um, yeah, I'll pull up the share the screen so we can talk about a few things. Hey, can I uh, interrupt you for just a second, James? Of course you can. Thanks, man. Um, I just want to bring out something that I'm struggling with as far as colors sure. concerned, and uh, I don't know if it's something that you guys uh, might would be interested in doing a uh, something with, but. Anyway, uh, I feel like I struggle sometimes. Sorry, I'm a little bit out of breath. I just walked a little. Bit. Um, I feel like I struggle sometimes with uh, telling the difference in color uh, when it's warm and cool versus the value of the color itself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, um, again, I think uh, uh, there are warm cools. Right, and there are cool warms. <laughs> so I think you end up, uh, you know, there's always, you're gonna need a contrast, right, for the relativity of it. So, all right, so I'm looking at the at your background, right, behind you, right sure. now. And I'll, I'll, let me pin it so that way, you know, hopefully we can, we can use this as a, an analysis, right, of what's happening. So, um, for instance, uh, we have different tonal values that are going on in the the violet range, right? So we've got these mountains. It looks like a mountain escape. Um, and so there is a, I don't know why. I'm, I'm sorry, I was looking at, uh, looking at the chat. Uh, so. <laughs> So there's some dark, there's some dark mountains and, um, and then they have like a highlight in them, right? As I'm, as I'm looking at it, let me see. Let me see if I can, uh, let me see sure. if I can make It'll you hold. the pin. You're, you're, you're cool. Beautiful. Oh, that's cool. I'm really hoping that Stephen is pinned. <laughs> okay, okay. Can you everybody see Stephen's screen? Okay, good. All right. Sorry, I was uh, I was distracted. I apologize for that. Okay, so um, so we've got this uh, we've got this violet, and we've got this uh, we've got a value contrast situation right so there's this darker violet and then it has has these moments of light 
right? There's some light highlights in it. Um, that gives us the that gives us like the most contrast, right? And also kind of brings forward in this particular case. Um, and so, oh, I know what's happening. I'm sorry. Here, let me let me. Uh, whenever I speak, whenever I speak, it goes to it goes to my screen. I'm just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, it's, it's <laughs> sorry about that. I'm like I'm like learning how I'm learning how. Uh, I'm Zoom learning is how, confusing. Uh, I, you were right about that. So yeah, all right. anyway, um, yeah, I'm sorry that, I'm sorry this is like not going well. So confusing. Uh, the whole point that, that we're trying to make is like the greatest range of contrast is going to, is, um, uh, well, put it like this, right? You need to have different ranges of contrast. All right. So in this case, the foreground is um, uh, has has this great range of contrast. As we go back, we have uh, we have a less and less sort of range of contrast, right? So in the farthest back mountains, we can kind of see that we just have the least amount of tonal value difference, right? Also, the color is less intense. If that makes sense, right? The color is more intense, more saturated as we're coming closer. And that's just this particular example. Um, as far as the temperature goes, I think we have like a real contrast in terms of the sky plane versus like, let's say the water. So the sky plane in this, you know, uh, you know in, in the mural that we're looking at on Steven's screen is warm. Right, so it has a, it has a real warm temperature. It's like orange. It's kind of neutral. It's not very intense either, but it's it's warm orange color. And then the water, uh, the river that's kind of flowing between the mountains, is cooler. Right, it's blue colors. Um, in the water itself, we have different ranges of value. Right, there's there's at least three different tones of three different hues. Right, and they each have a different tone associated with them. And so. Um, the more neutralized that it is, right, it's, it progressively gets like warmer, right? Here's what I would argue. I would argue that the, that the, the violet, right, is warmer than the blue, right? It actually has, there's some presence of red. So red and blue make violet. So it's slightly warmer in temperature, even though if you were to put that violet, that purple color next to you look at it next to the, the orange of the sky, it looks much cooler, right? So we can tell the value, right? Lightness and darkness based on, you know, again, a technique I like to use for that is to squint my eyes, not just to blur them, like everything gets blurry, but if I squint them, then I really get to a sense of like, what is the lightest part? What's the darkest? That gives me a closer sense of the value range. But when I'm looking for color temperature, I try to look for the most obvious uh, distinction possible. And then, you know, then you can start to think about, you know, you start to think about how the colors are really, you know, um, interacting with each other. It's all gonna be relative, you know? So again, like the, the violet of the mountains against the sky, much cooler. But again, the violet of the mountains next to the blue of the water, I think you could sort of say there's a little bit there's a little slightly warmer sort of character to it. Um, I don't know if that was helpful or not, Stephen, but I <laughs> uh, hope that's, I hope that starts to, you know, get, get your, get your imagination running when you're, when you're analyzing color, you know, you can, you know, just think about it like that. Sure. Yeah. A lot of times I use a color wheel to help me decide what color was, you know, warm either way but i'd like to just be better at it with my eye opposed to using a tool but um, yeah, same. thank god for tools you know <laughs> uh -huh. right. Right. and i would right. i would buddy that um doesn't use tools like that to try it out it's not cheating to educate yourself no. you know what i mean but negative thoughts about that but anything you can do to make a better decision for you or a client would uh you know, I'm sure they would appreciate it. Uh -huh. Right. But I'll quit hollering at you. I'm sorry. No, I, this was, this is great because this really, you know, it's, 
it really kind of you know leads us into this idea of contrast, right? Again, I think uh, when we're talking about you know, <laughs> we're like now we're like now we're on the subject of color, but we talk about it, it's it's you know the 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 really the three components to color theory that you want to think about uh, hue, uh, saturation, and uh, intensity, right? Um, so, all right. Um, uh, value, right? Hue, intensity, value. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> Apologize. So hue, what do we mean by that? It's just the name of the color. So I was naming off colors, violet, orange, blue, right? Uh, you know, um, we, we all learned the names of the colors when we were, you know, very young. Now, the next part of the analysis would be to think about like how saturated, how intense the color is. Is it, is it really, really intense or is it somewhat neutral? Right? Is it is it like, it's it, it like uh, we think about neutral colors like like you know, um, tans and ochres or you know browns, even like sort of you know cool gray and stuff like that. There, those are like examples of there's some color, right? But it but they're more neutralized. And then the final thing, maybe the most important part of it, is the value, right? How dark, how light, right? Something is. So again, I think if you, you know, if you want to, you can, color wheels especially are helpful because they'll show you often like a really intense color, like, you know, as close to a pureness of an idea of a pure color as you can get. And then it will show you, um, then it will show you uh, like, uh, like neutral versions of it. It will show you different values of, of it, right? Because again, you could have like a neutral color that has a lighter value or a neutral color that has a darker value. You can have really intense color that's lighter or darker. Um, it's, it becomes, it, it can become like this very simple relationship, right? That like it's, it gets really complicated. But again, using tools, I think, and like trying to think about it in those simple terms of what color is it, right? Uh, how intense is it? And then how light or dark is it? Those will those sorts of principles will really help you when you're thinking about like you know dealing with color and it's all some complexity, and that's why we start with value with you know uh, with lightness and darkness because it can really help to um, streamline the the process. Uh, so what I wanted to do is share my screen here. Right. Hmm. Sorry about that. Let me try one more time, see if I can share it. My technical difficulties have rubbed mm. off. They, they have. <laughs> I know they, they have. Ah, I know, I know what happened. I got it. So let's try, let's try it again. Yeah. All right, so hopefully you're all seeing uh, um, Guy Atchison's homepage on guyatchison.com. Yep. I'm uh, I'm glancing at my glancing at the chat at the the play. Yeah, there it is. Okay, cool. So let's look at a couple of tattoos and let's talk about contrast as a as a concept. Um, Oh, so uh, just picking one at random here. Um, right on. So let's let's check it out and let's see if we can't um, let's see if we can't like think about some of these some of these contrasting elements. Right. Again, some of the things to think about are tonal value, right, and then also range of value, right, like. Let's say dark is dark to light is light. Temperature. What can anybody help me out here? What what is anybody seeing in this particular example? Can we talk about like some of the contrast that's that's happening here? The foreground has really bold, thick black lines, uh, and the the inner part has color lines, so it's a lot softer and further away. Absolutely. I think that's that's a. Um, 
that's a very key element to it, right? You have a you have a crisp line versus let's it's almost like this, right? If we if we zoom in a little bit closer, we have line, right? And then if we look back here, it's like edge, right? So we can see there's a definite, it's like almost like the the like you say the color line it almost becomes more of an edge because this background is pushed right up against it does that make sense so we have the difference in in, in clarity of focus hmm. right the the crisp black line adds a adds a degree of focus to this foregrounded element whereas in the background we have um we have almost more of a you know like the quality of an edge right and so I think that's uh, I think that's a great observation. What else? Any other any other observations that we can make about this? Um, the light source is coming from within. Yeah, you know, the things that are in the foreground are darker and more shadowed. It's not that the edge is where the internal light source is hitting it, and that's where you have your color on the edges of the parts that are in the foreground. Yes. No, I think that's, so that's another great point. And, and so here's the, here's what I think that we can, here's what we can make from that. <clears throat> when we look at this, you know, this more, uh, this more interior stuff, right? You're saying it's, it's, it's more of the color. You're right because there's no black ink in this part. Yeah. Does that make sense? Right, mm. the black ink is reserved for this foreground element in this particular example, right? Um, so what we're what we're having um, we're having this full range of black all the way to to light, light, white. This gives us this uh, this gives us a range of contrast that's different than this range of contrast that's back here. Right. Instead of going all the way to black, you know, even the even the darkest blue, you know, if, if we if we said that black is 100 percent and white is, let's say, zero. Right. We've got this whole range from, you know, zero to 100 in this foreground stuff. But in the background, we've, you know, I don't know, maybe it's like, uh, you know, maybe 50 one, you know, like uh, uh, zero to, to uh, yeah, zero to 50 percent, something like that. Right. It's a much, much. Mm -hmm like narrower range of contrast. What else? What else is it? Can anybody see? Is there um, ochre in this, do you think? I think so. I think yeah, so. Yeah, I would say that um, that that's a nice uh, contrasting relationship. <laughs> so yeah, no, go forward, go for, deeper with that. Um, oh, I thought I, I, I thought you might have. I kind of uh, uh, phased out for a second. Um, thought you might have mentioned it, but yeah, you know. Um, so you got the muted, the muted ochre um, with the bright super saturated blue and you can kind of barely see the ochre it almost looks like skin um mm -hmm. but it's still there and it provides um a contrast for the blue so what's interesting is uh i read a book called the principles of contrast and color and this this contrast thing actually happens in our brain like if you like let's say let's let's say if you see blue anything that's next to it is automatically going to have a shade of its contrasting color. So this happens in your brain. So when I, when you look at this tattoo, the blue is actually making the ochre more ochre. The ochre is actually making the blue more blue. And yeah, uh, orange and blue are contrasting colors. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, so uh, they're on, on the opposite spectrum and then you got and then you got the kind of the smooth texture uh contrasting with the more i would say the smoother one is in the one in the middle and, and on the inside and the rougher texture is on the outside mm -hmm. uh 
I would say this has all been very brilliant analysis <laughs> so far. It's really, uh, yeah, really great, great work, everybody. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's check out another one. So you know, again, we're just sort of going, uh, you know, just going through and checking them out. But um, but yeah, what what do we how, make of make of this one? I love how guys' menu on the side is even looks very biomass. Right. <laughs> yeah, every every touch has been sort of considered. Um and so and again it's like a you know, like you're saying, it's there's a certain amount of this doesn't compete with the image you're supposed to see. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um there's a there's a contrast consideration. Right. Of course, as you roll over them, all these little, you know, all these little menu I items they do highlight, you know, so that way you can see them. But uh, you know, obviously, our focus is you know going to be on this this work. So um, right. So this one, I think, has a, a definitely a certain amount of um, like it's it feels much more cool than you know the other one had some of that warm color. But what are some of the you know what are some of these approaches to the um, to contrast that we were just sort of talking about? Like what. What can you observe? What can what can anybody um, uh, speak to as we're we're kind of thinking about it? Well, I think again with this one that you can tell that the pieces that are supposed to be closer uh, appear closer are darker than I, I can't tell. Is that a spider web or a crystal or whatever that is? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes it is. It's, it's, yes, it's what you uh, Yes. <laughs> But yeah, and I, I guess I also can't tell if there there's like a reddish thing in there, or if that's just because he got stabbed. But <laughs> um, that could also be a part of it that it adds a bit of illumination, uh, other than just um, adding white. I my my guess is it's probably irritation from being fresh. But yeah. again, it's likely that there's going to be some skin that will, you know, that will probably come through, you know, like next to all that white, you know, it's, it's probably not, it's probably not, you know, like a, well, just, you know, for those, those who, you know, haven't as had as much, as much experience like using white ink, it's not like a, you know, it's, it's not like it falls out, white ink stays, but it's, it becomes subtle, right? You can't like really rely on it, but it does make a difference, right? So um, and it's very challenging to try to have any sort of large field of, you know, a flat white. It can be very challenging to do. I'm not going to say impossible, but. Do you but think anyway, there's, yeah, I, I, go ahead. do you think that there's any black in the actual star looking thing? Like not in the, in the spaces, but like in the, in the crevices and stuff. Do you think that that's actual black or you think it's like a super, you know, super dark gray or just like a diffused black? There might it be looks like just a, a little bit like brushed in ever so gently, maybe just a little bit, but, but I would, you know, certainly like, you know, the outline and then there's some here, the core shadow, right? Certainly this core yeah. shadow has some black, but I, but you're, I think, you know, it's like, uh, you're right to notice, like, there's a little tiny bit that helps to sort of strengthen it, but, um, but we can, I think we, you know, we can easily tell that there's, um, it's been reserved. There's been priority has been given to certain elements and then it's been, you know, uh, in other elements, there's more reserve that's being shown for the, you know, to add contrast. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's symmetrical, right? So it has this, and it's on a symmetrical, you know, it's on, you know, in the middle of the body part, right? So middle of the neck, so it has a symmetry to it. Um, it can be uh, can be challenging, I think, you know, putting symmetrical or geometrical shapes like on, you know, just on the side of the arm or something like that. It, usually, this this part can, or these portions of the body, the center, I think, can be. Uh, symmetry can be very effective, but again, it's like, it's not a hard and fast rule, right? I've, you know, I'm sure we can all, we've all seen, you know, examples of asymmetrical sort of flow, flowy designs, like right through the middle, you know, that, that look fantastic too. It's almost a personality 
uh, like idiosyncratic of the of the you know the collector. What are they into? You know what I mean? How are they going to wear it? Um, I know you know I I know I hear the piercer say it all the time when he's lining up like earrings on people. He's like, all right, nobody's ears are the same. <laughs> you know, <laughs> nobody's nobody's perfect, right? You know, it's definitely uh, that's definitely true. But um, yeah, symmetry is uh, it's it's pretty proximate. Uh, no, I love it. Let's 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 do another one. These are this is fun, super super fun. So all right, let me back up a bit. Ooh, ooh. So I love that this is this, just this Google size works too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes, you know, I think that's, that's what's interesting is like, you know, sometimes it's, sometimes it's hard to find some of this stuff. And sometimes it's kind of like, um, there's just so much of it, we'll never see. You know what yeah. I mean? There's so much of it that's, that's probably completely undocumented, or if it's, you know, it's just not, it's just not out there. You know what I mean? And um, there's something kind of nice that makes it more exclusive in a strange, you know, kind of a strange way. But but anyway, you know, let's, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this one. Um, or how can we, again, thinking about like some of the, some of the concepts that we've been talking about. You think those glazed in a proper <laughs> <laughs> oh, Yeah, Kyle. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, Kyle. Oh, you, Kyle. Yeah, oh. yeah, I want to, I want to, I want to put you on the spot. Give us, um, I want to hear some of your analysis. Oh, I'm trying to, I almost feel like it's all warm toned the entire thing all the way through. Cause like the, even the greens kind of have like a yellowish tone to it. So it's all pretty warm, but like you have like a, a, a more of a cold kind of a bluish purple on the slug, whatever spine looking thing on the bottom part of that. Um, you got the super tight detail in the foreground and like it slowly rotates over to like no detail in the background on the top part. Um, yeah, just, just a lot of texture in the foreground, a little in the background. And I like how it feels like um, how intense the background color still is. Cause you know, the, the, the foreground, the color's more neutral and everything like that. But I like how like the saturation and the brightness and the intensity of like the reds and oranges in the background make it feel like a little bit closer than you would with some backgrounds. So it feels a little bit more like claustrophobic, I guess, in a sense. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know what else to say. Yeah. No, I love like that. The orange is coming at you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it does. Which is interesting because I've always like, um, uh, just in my head, I just think that warm is supposed to be in front and cool is supposed to be in the back mm. you know mm. but in the real world that's not always you know that's not always the case the, the mm. sky will be warm you know pin magenta sometimes you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. and then a child will be holding a blue popsicle in front of it you know what I'm saying like yeah, yeah. you know exactly. it doesn't happen in the real world you know so mm -hmm. there's a there'd be a, a contrast you know what I mean? There would be like a tonal value difference, right? I'm just sort of picturing the sky being, you know, and you know, a very sort of uh, red, violet, you know, magenta type of a color, and it would be very light, especially compared to the, you know, the figure of, you know, a body of child holding a popsicle, you know, blue popsicle or something. They would be very dark in, uh -huh. in comparison. Uh -huh. You would register the colors. Just like Kyle was talking about, I think you're right, Kyle. That there's it's it's sort of warm. There's an ochre colors in the foreground, and then more warm in the background. But it's that it's the it's the contrast or the comparison of each. Kind of to Spirit's point, it makes that greenish color, the yellow green, it makes it cooler. You know what I mean? It's a sort of it forces it to become a cooler temperature, and then again the the intensity of the background versus the neutralness of the foreground. Now we're talking about like, you know, there's a there's a real sort of uh, contrast in that relationship. Like like Kyle observed that there's more more details, more like uh, textures in the, you know, in the foreground elements and less in the background. Again, more contrast. If, you know, 
I think the tendency is certainly, you know, as I'm looking at my work, I'm like, ah, oh, my tendency is like I put some shading in the foreground stuff and then I put the same shading in the background stuff, just thinking like, all right, this, now that. And it's it's so easy to do. It's so, it's it's just like, uh, it's like you start focusing on this element and then you, and you really want to focus on the next element. And before you know it, like nothing is nothing is contrasting anymore, mm-hmm. right? Everything becomes on the same level. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas this really kind of shows us, you know, that like if you can keep in mind the whole, the relationship that you can, you know, if we were to look at this, uh, you, can, you can have, you can achieve, you know, really interesting results. Like if we look here, I mean, it's, you know, there's only so far we can zoom in. It's like, it's very painterly in this little, this little section of the red, right? There isn't very much like, focus to it as you know as far as i can't tell exactly what it is um a little bit red over here a little bit orange over there right when we zoom back and we kind of take it for what it is it begin it, it there's a certain clarity that happens and it's again probably something that's happening in our imaginations right where where we want to sort things out we want to to try to uh you know make some sense, right? Make it intelligible. Um, Cause we can read it. That's, that was the purpose of the contrast was making it, um, you know, we can discern this foreground stuff from this background stuff, even though it's very abstract and it's, you know, it's like not necessarily anything that we would, um, you know, we could tell exactly. There's definitely some, uh, Definitely, the you know the thought was there to to make sure to give us distinctions between those things, and then we can you know start to start to come up with our own sorts of um, uh, conclusions about it. Um, let's do one more. Let's do one more, and I think that will be um, that'll probably be good. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, this one's pretty cool. So. Um. Love the colors. A little bit more centered, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty sick. Um, but I would, I just love hearing what everybody has to say because it's almost like it's almost like everybody really is a, has a real lock on this. You know, as we're looking at this stuff, it really seems like there's a there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of knowledge here in the mastermind, right? All the everybody here really has, oh, a, has, a, has a pretty good grasp points. on it. it really, more. Can really you tell us more? Oh, no, how? Oh, I was going to say, I just really like the, the flow contrast of uh, how like mm-hmm. um, the biomex just like kind of super flowy and then you have your stiff, rigid like crystals. Um, I really, really like that contrast. kind of reminds me of like water flowing around a rock. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I just that's the first thing he sent us me. I wish I could tattoo like that. <laughs> well, I'm you're you're gonna tattoo like you know you, and we're gonna you know we're all gonna uh-huh. tattoo like we you know ourselves. But I think we can learn we can learn so much from each other, you know, and studying the greats and sort of figuring out like. Um, some of the principles that they're using, you know, that, that have been successful, right, will help us, I think, get our point across even more. Um, well, let me rephrase. I, I'm excited to see how I am going to be able to tattoo uh, in my growth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no. I, um, well, I mean, we can, we can already tell, right, you're – I mean, you're, I feel like you're making incredible strides. I mean, you're, you're a great tattooer. Thanks, man. And you're, you know, you're, you are, you, you know, you, you, are, you are. And also your, uh, the mask that you showed us the other week was, you know, I mean, it was exceptional. And so I just think it's, uh, um, it's, it's, it's gotta be consistent. I don't, I, you know, I, I don't know. It's gotta be consistent practice, right? It's gotta be this consistent yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. showing up every day and doing it yeah. i mean i'm trying to tell myself this you know what i mean like, yeah and what's interesting it's funny because you know not to cut you off but you know obviously i didn't cut you off but um i just wanted to <laughs> say that um 
because you, you know, as you know, I haven't really been drawing like that. And I was tattooing yesterday and I felt it. I was like, I felt kind of lost. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I felt what it feels like to not be consistently drawing. And it's a different thing than when you're consistently drawing every day and when you're in a tattoo. Let me tell you that shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, as soon as I got off that tattoo, I started a, I started a new piece. So, fuck that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I hear you. You know? I think that's... Um... I think that's like just being reflective. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you're, it, it has to be the growing that you're, that you're talking about, right? Like, um, I think the confidence is that you would, you would experience that, like, sort of like, you know, your own lack and shortcoming. Mean, we all have it, right? There's, you can always improve stuff. You know what I mean? So, so being confident isn't about like arrogance and stuff. It's like, it's like, it's like feeling that like shortcoming and then getting right back into it. That's, I feel yeah. like that has to be the confidence. And, and so mm -hmm. um, I, I guess I just, I, I totally relate because <laughs> I, I feel, I feel, you know, like I feel like that all the time. I feel like I'm coming up short and it's, um, it's almost like the more that I, the more that I study, the more that I practice, um, the more often that that sort of, you know, that it comes up, um, so I think it's just um, it's something that we all it's it's like you should right yeah. <laughs> you should you should feel that way I think so um, mm -hmm. anyway it's well, like some of the, I, go ahead oh I was just going to say like even some of like the best built roads are still going to get potholes from time to time like it's inevitable you know? speak on it Kyle speak on it <laughs> So yeah, like it, it we're we're destined to fail, and we're gonna fail, and we're gonna continue to fail forward. You know, so um, it's just part of the process. Falling with style. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. like yeah. It sucks. Yeah, when it's I, terrible, but when I started making sure I drew or painted something every day, I realized I was going to have to get comfortable with making a lot of crap. Yeah. Oh, Amber. Oh. What? Say it again, Amber. Say it again. <laughs> I was going to have to get comfortable with making a lot of crap if I was going to produce artwork every day. Just yeah. to keep my muscle memory sharp. And, yeah. Because you know, you're not inspired every day either. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. some days when I look at that piece of paper for an hour before I'm like, all right, I got to put something on this. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it turns out being crap, but my hand still did something. And then when I pick up the yeah. tattoo machine, I still feel like I have that muscle memory because I'm still doing it. Even if what I'm producing on paper is crap. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I just well, have uh, no inspiration. It's the bad days that are worth the most sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like this is... Um, this is the, what we've been talking about all day, right? We really have been talking about it all day is that, uh, you know, contrast, right? <laughs> contrast. <laughs> There's contrast, right? Um, all right, well, I'm gonna, uh, so, all right, I'm gonna show, um, I'm gonna show a couple of my pieces since we, um, all right, so here's here's uh, here's something that I did. Um, Whoa! And so yeah, this is, uh, this is a few years ago, but I kind of feel like you know I was looking at I was just looking at some work. And I'm like, all right, what are do I have any examples of you know things that show them where have I done best in contrast? This is one of the, I I think there's some some room for criticism here certainly, but I'm but I figured I would show it. This is uh, some contrasty stuff that I feel like um, putting in some of the some of the, the principles that we've been talking about. Um, but yeah, so here's, uh, here are some of my, uh, um, I'll start off with some positive stuff. <laughs> I'll, I'll move into some, some of my own criticism of it. 
So there's a there's a nice kind of rhythm of uh, of cool to warm, right? And I was able to develop some sort of rhythms of cool and warm here in the in the petals of the flower. Um, and then again, I think there's a there's a nice contrast as the you know there's a very dark background versus um, some reserve, right? It didn't it wasn't didn't put as much of the really really dark stuff uh like in this glowy part of the you know the flower um there's a little bit in the petals so i think that you know it's, again i was sort of hope, hope, hoping for a strengthening um and then of course i i did try to to uh add some some stronger contour outlines to some of the elements that were somewhat closer so this wave here in the front has a stronger outline and then the waves in the back slightly um, you know, slightly less bold, right? But okay, so here's the so here's the some of my critical feedback for, for this piece. Um, probably could have done with uh, a little bit less dark value back here, all the way in the back, and still been like effective. Could have been, you know, still probably dark would have been nice, but going all the way to black, go all the way to the you know to, to the dark range right there. I think. Um, flattens it out a bit right and then probably uh some of the you know the outlines here could have been maybe could have been color right maybe could have used the color rather than that, that really heavy that heavy black um but yeah so i think you know again this is sort of like this is my um uh uh we were looking at guys work critiquing guy Hedgeson, you know but uh it's you know, so That's instead dope. of that, like, uh, <laughs> I'm doing, here's some of my work. I'm, you know, giving it a little bit of criticism. I really like that fun. purple that you put in um, the Lotus, like, um, yeah, thank is you. that purple? Yeah, yeah, it looks like it's purple on the lower left hand. Yeah, thanks. I think I uh, um, was going for, like, uh, uh, the contrast, like, so purple and yellow are complementary colors, so I wanted the wanted to try to give it some contrast as much as I possibly mm -hmm. could. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, this is, so here's this one. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, I like that the purple from the flower kind of uh, draws your eye up to the purple in the dark bit up in the water bit. I know that that was very mm. concise at, <laughs> way of saying that, but, <laughs> but um, it kind of ties your eye through there. I agree. Thanks. This is, uh, so there's a nice little uh, pause on egg sort of, uh, you know, um, uh, so the, the dark uh, wave sort of against the lighter background here and then sort of it's dynamic, right? So the background becomes darker and the light edge versus the dark you know the dark lower part versus the lighter background so mm -hmm. i i do it i you know i thought that was that part was um I, uh, successful so. i'm i know this is a you know you're the artist and you know a lot more than me but that spot where you think you shouldn't have gone that dark i think you could have gone darker that th i think that's and i think uh, it that's probably good analysis yeah i think it would have like because it's so dark behind the swirls in the the um lotus it mm. would have hide that darkness in that behind the lotus and kind of brought your eye around the swirl more what i so i here's what i want to read from what you're saying i think like i think more decisiveness would have been better so maybe the dark behind the lotus could have been a little less dark and then the background could have been darker, right? More of a range. Or keep it dark by the lotus and then make the background uh, not quite not quite that dark, right? One or the other. Having the, you know, having a contrast between this element, foreground, having, you know, a certain range, and then the background keeping a certain range, I think that would have been... Yeah. Um, that's I, that's what I that's what I'm that's how I'm reading what uh, you know interpreting you know what you what you're saying is that like having the being more decisive, keeping the background real dark, 
right? So light foreground element, darker background element, or vice versa. You can dark foreground element, dark and light, and then kind of middle, you know, uh, some more some more medium tones and stuff. That yeah. could have been. Are you talking about um like kind of right where the curve, the curvature, the hook of the the wave is? Like you could yeah. have gone darker in that background. Okay, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, not inside the hook, but around the curve on the outside. Oh, really? Huh. That's interesting. You could have like maybe used black. Is that black or is that like dark blue? I think there's uh it's probably there's probably some black. You know what I mean? I probably went I probably went a little heavy on the on the on the black ink, like right on that spot, but you know. I think again, it's like uh, review, right? You know, we're, <laughs> review your work, go back over it, check it out, look for things that are, you know, there's there was some positive stuff, and there's also been some really, I think, very, uh, I think, very helpful critical feedback for me. You know, as I'm as I'm I'm growing and I'm learning how to do this, I, I think again, it's like, uh, um, it's it's just so crucial. You know what I mean? It really is. Um, hold on a second. Let me see. So this one, yeah. I'll show. I'll show this one. All right. Okay. That's so cute. Oh, that might so be my cute. <laughs> cute. Um, I'm pretty so... sure that's my uncle Liam. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he posed for this one. <laughs> he was <laughs> <laughs> for me. Yeah, it was excellent. Um, this is funny. Well, this you know, is, think... It like tells a story. Like I'm, I'm looking at it, and it's like, oh, he's drunk. He probably spent all his money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so cool. Best nap of his life, yeah. though. Right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Um. So as as far as contrast goes on this one, that's the theme. You know, kind of talking about. Um left it open in the background right it's just skin but so there's a nice silhouette as far as the you know it's there's a nice there's enough darkness right within the piece itself all the elements have you know basically i think the only area i mean i have a dark outline there you know but it would be probably this like hand this is like you know uh this is light on light um so so that's a little bit weak, you know. I mean, just you know, luckily the the line was there to save me, you know. But having some, having some, you know, value back here, slightly darker, that could that could strengthen this this uh, this uh, composition. Um, but other than that, I think there's you know there's some nice sort of play with you know warm and cool. The green is cool, right? We know that it's it has blue in it. But compared to some of this blue low light stuff, it starts to warm up the green, right? Now again, we go back up here, like there's this yellow, you know, hat detail. By comparison, it cools the green down. Um, maybe the same sort of thing with this, you know, warm brown for the bottle, you know, kind of like by comparison, sort of, you know, gives us, um, uh, activates can activate the, you know, the green in various ways. Um, one area of contrast I think was successful is like this, uh, like pot of, there's some gold in it, pot of gold. Um, mm -hmm. Instead of going all the way dark on the inside, kind of reserved it, made it, it's, it's about a medium tone inside of there, right? Reserved the really dark stuff for the, for this sort of shadow on the, the, you know, uh, the outside of it. Looks like I missed a spot right down there but <laughs> but anyway you know it's like nobody's perfect so it's yeah, reflected highlight well, yeah yeah be but it's competing <laughs> it's competing <laughs> so it needs to it needs a little bit more uh it needs another go but um but yeah that's the um just i was looking at some of my work and i was like well what can i show that might sort of demonstrate what we were you know the things that we were talking about and, and so i was hoping that these ones would uh We'll start to get us there and then you know again like uh subject myself to a little bit of you know criticism i think that's uh <laughs> that's only that's only right and only fair so um but yeah i just wanted to i want to say thanks everybody for uh for participating and uh you know for 
um, for being a part of being a part of this uh, little presentation about contrast, something that I think is um, it's it's always something that we can work on, always something that we can um, um, get better at. So analyzing it in the work of others and then analyzing it in your own work, I think is is going to be something valuable. It will really help um, you know answer those questions. Um, yeah. I hope that was I hope that was that was enjoyable and and fun for everybody and you know yeah that was great trying to lay so it for sure thank you. yeah no thank you I'm hoping to lay the groundwork so we can start talking about color uh you know a little bit more in depth color. look at some color oh, wheels question yeah, well, color. I have a question yes um, please yeah let's talk about this. so so one of the things that I'm starting to gotta get okay so. Just the dip, like okay, so the, the leprechaun, it didn't have any really black in it. Like, I guess, okay, so I guess it did in the, like, the lower half, but in the top half, it was all color. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah, let's go back to it here. Uh, okay. Hi, Bruno. Bruno and Creature are both in the chat, in the chat today. Hello. Hello. There they are. Hey, what's up? Um, right. So here's the, so maybe a little bit of black, you know, as the core shadow on some of these areas, you know what I mean? But otherwise it's, yeah, I'm trying to do more of a, uh, more of a color, you know, consideration, I suppose. Um, but yeah, please, what was your, um, what was your, what were you trying to, um, to ask about spirit? Um, yeah. Um, you know, cause I just kind of get caught up in two schools of thought. And one is, you know, if it's bold, it'll hold, you know, you put black everywhere, put black, 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 and it makes the color pop, you yeah. know, but then this, you got a black in just a few areas and your color's still popping. You know, um, and so I'm 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 still kind of trying to tread that line of like how much black you put in it. You know, can it be full color and no black at all? Can you just use con like muted tones and things like that? And will it still hold? You know, a stand the test of time, things like that. I think that having so using the full range is going to be important and give you that like that strength. And that's so there's there is some there is some truth to you know the the bold the bold will hold, but again I think having a having a strong silhouette right so having a shape that you can you can see especially from like like across the street you know if, mm -hmm. if you have a if you have a if you have something that's shapely you know so you know like it looks like a form it looks like a shape. I don't, I don't know about, I don't know about this one. If that does it, you know, this one might sort of turn into a blob once you get far enough away from it. But, you know, again, like sort of thinking about it on the body. Um, I, again, it's, you can, uh, I think, you know, people can disagree, right? But having something that, that flows nicely on the body and, and has, a, has a very distinct sort of silhouette to it, that's, that's going to likely stand the test of time very well right um so again it's there's a contrast of, of value having having a having sufficient amount of black um but again if you have all the same value everywhere you don't have the contrast does that make sense like uh, you know it's like we yeah. that's what i i believe it i think if if we, you have if you have the same black all over the place you just don't get the same kind of contrast yeah. and so as far as color goes Having having a you know if you're using color for for your tattoo having more of a sense of probably like warm versus cool is going to give you likely uh, again more contrast right so um, the warm cool contrast the, um, the the detailed versus you know sort of maybe gradients or you know sort of smoother less less textured rather maybe that's a better word for it texture versus no texture um, focus so having you know 
having some like bold lines, uh, you know, like, uh, all right. Uh, let's say for instance, uh, this is probably the greatest example, but um, you know, the, I have a strong contour line here around, uh, you know, around the elements, you know, the shoes, the body, uh, you know, but I don't have as strong of a, you know, of a contour, like, you know, say this, this little part right here, you know, like by the crotch, you know, um, it's not as accentuated. It's not the same black line that goes around it. Same thing for, you know, here, like there's a little bit of a less line here. It kind of takes some of the focus, you know, away. You know what I mean? So it's not quite as crisp. It's not quite as like, you know, zeroed in. It, it allows for a little bit of um, difference. And so I think um, same thing with the facial features, I guess. You know what I mean? Like I don't have the same, you know, uh, don't have the same black all over the place that's that, those are the kind of the things that i think um that you can go forward sort of thinking about as you're developing your your work um trying to be decisive where you put your blacks trying to have some priority and then also having some reserve right some things you reserve you don't put as much um intense color you don't put as much dark black instead you don't put as much texture Instead, you think this is where I want to put the most amount of texture. This is where I want to put the most amount of, you know, the most amount of value contrast, brightest, bright, darkest, dark, that sort of a thing. Um, and so, and as long as you're decisive about it, I'm going to put it all in the foreground, right? Or I'm going to put it all in the background, right? That's going to, again, give you strength, uh, visual strength, because again, contrast is about difference. It's about demonstrating difference. Um, and then so through that difference, uh, that's what gives it, you know, sort of legibility, right? You can sort of, you can clearly distinguish this element from that element. After that, it becomes a readability thing. Like what sorts of ways are you talking to the audience? With the, you know, with the leprechaun, like you said, there was a kind of a story that you could start to, you know, come up with. Um, but with some of Guy Atchison's like more abstracted pieces, we weren't really seeing much of a narrative that was being illustrated. It was more of like a, just a sense of space and a sense of, you know, um, uh, it's, I, I guess a sense of like almost just interesting elements kind of placed together. And so, I don't know. I hope that's, I hope that's, that's, that's my thought about it. But I, you know, anybody else have any, you know, sort of, <laughs> anybody else have any insights here or or thoughts about what we're talking? Always. <laughs> oh, oh, no, the dead air, dead air is fine. Isn't it? <laughs> if we're talking about Wait, the color no, wheel, please. you know my thoughts on the color wheel. It's missing the gender. <laughs> it's, it's in there. But it's I, I know not, it's, you know, it's in not there, the, but it's but the so primary hard one. <laughs> it's so hard to create magenta with the colors on a standard color wheel. Mm -hmm. And I know there's also a 13 colored color wheel and there are alternate color wheels, but none of them have magenta. And I think magenta is imperative towards a warm, cool contrast. It really is. You add it or to so many things to make them warmer. And even if it's just a tiny little bit. Yeah, it's relative, right? It goes, it can go, it can go either way. Yeah. So I, yeah, no, I think it's, it's really, really important, uh, you know, and that's, and that's a great observation too, I think. Um, so, and, and I think probably, you know, so we'll talk about color theory a little bit more in depth and stuff. That's my plan next week. But um I mean, you all have this real foundation in it. I and mean, we're kind of all immersed in color all the time, you know, unless you're colorblind, right? Which is, so I, you know, I definitely know, I've known tattoo artists who are, um, you know, have, they have, you know, they can't distinguish reds and greens, right? And so, I mean, basically, so they can't really distinguish, yeah, right? They, 
well, they make really interesting choices. Yeah. And I would imagine, I mean, so I don't have that condition, but I would imagine that it really sort of makes everything about like value, right? Everything would be about, you know, maybe subtle shifts in temperature, like depending on, because it would be a spectrum. Sky is partly colorblind. Who is? I, I, yes. Yeah, he's Guy. never hit it or anything. He's very open about it, but yeah. he's partly colorblind. And I think that's an advantage for him because it gives him such a unique look on things and his colors come out so contrasting and so dynamic. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it can it can be this uh you got to you got to work with what you've been given. <laughs> you know what I mean? You really have to. You got to like use what you got. And so if you can you can turn you turn things into your advantage, I think that's, you know, more power to you. And so that's the, um, uh, so I think that's a really great point. Yeah. So yeah. Somebody that we, somebody we all like look up to has, you know, a bit of, uh, a bit of color blindness and he's open about it. Um, and so again, it's sort of like, um, there are people that can see, you know, a broader range of the spectrum than others as well, right? Now what must their, what must their like experience be like? You know, it's, there are people who have synesthesia, they feel like emotions and all sorts that. of feelings, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. everybody's experience is of course gonna be unique, but, um, but again, it's sort of like, again, we, we, we do come together and we can, can work in, you know, work with some of these principles and it helps us to convey our meaning to the other, right? It helps us to convey, you know, what's inside. We're trying to get it out so desperately. We can't get what's in our minds, you know, exactly into somebody else's mind, but that's what language is, right? It's the, you know, it's the illusion that we put forward that, that like covers up the gap between us all, right? <laughs> our failure to be, you know, our failure to actually get our point across is, is language, right? So um, it's beautiful. And that's the, and so we need contrast, right? <laughs> that way we can celebrate our differences even more. Yeah, it's about difference. Exactly. Um, uh, so, right. I think that was, um, I think that was a that was a great session today, mm -hmm. um, and I uh, so I just want to I want to encourage everybody to um, you know to to keep working on your drawings. You know, I know we're all busy, but I think Spirit had a great point about you know like getting back to it, right? Getting back to the drawing, and then how much it how much you I agree at least it, this is I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I feel like when I'm drawing regularly, it helps me do the other things that I, you know, that I want to do. Um, yeah. mm. Even though at the, t at the time it kind of feels indulgent haven, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> ah, maybe I should be doing something else, you know? Mm. Yeah. Drawing for yourself and practicing it, I think there's, there's something valuable to it. And, um, so I just, I just want to encourage everybody to do it and help, uh, I'll share, I'll share one more thing just because it's, uh, let me see here. Um, so again, I'm talking about uh, being involved in the, the Monday night drawing group. So here's a couple of drawings that I've, you know, that I've done recently. Um, Hi. Oh, beautiful. Thanks. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they're there. So anyways, um, one of them was, uh, I got to, I got the, you know, the privilege of getting to lead one of the, um, one of the drawing nights and my, it, you know, and my subject was contrast. <laughs> so, um, and I, uh, and I, I worked on this subject. It was, uh, sort of a, you know, like a tree. Um, so we have, we always have this assignment where we think about like a hypothetical client and then we take a week and we draw, you know, and um, so this is what I kind of came up with. Um, 
again, trying to think about contrast, the intensity of the color versus the, you know, the neutralness, um, maybe the edge quality. What I, what I think I, I ended up going with here is like sort of like this root thing in the extreme foreground and trying to produce the most, you know, the most value contrast. Um, and then, you know, again, this sort of repetition of warm and cool, intense and neutral colors. And then this one is the, this is the one I'm, that we're most recently working on. It's um, hypothetical client one, a mermaid. That is gorgeous. What? Yeah, it's it's yeah, for sale. Really, really nice. <laughs> this one's for I would so absolutely get that so tattoo. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, I appreciate it. I know that there's uh, there's always room for improvement, but I um, but again, I think I was I was really looking to I was looking at my reinventing book. You know what I mean? And I'm like, and I'm getting inspiration, but I'm not um, you know drawing it in my own hand. And that's been something that I've been I found a lot of uh enjoyment in doing right is to sort of i have to trace all the time i you know i won't pretend you know what i mean i i tattoo every day and i have to trace every day and so um it is what it is i'm not you know i don't look down on it it's it's necessary you know a lot of times customers come in and they want you know they want what they want and i so i respect that yeah, yeah they want right. the they want it they want what they want you know and like um so um sometimes i get a chance God, to do, you do what god said you know they they are um well you know you want to respect uh you know you gotta respect the customer is always respect right respect. in matters of taste right <laughs> right <laughs> right, right. They, they get <laughs> um but anyway so i uh but i've really enjoyed the the group um, Steven's in the group, Kyle's in the group. Um, there's, a, there's a, we just had a whole bunch of new people join the group. Uh, and so, again, I think if, does, if Gabe does is listening. Up, yeah. Oh, what? Okay. So if Gabe <laughs> is listening, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, I'm just wondering if it's too late to join the reinventing the tattoo this for this curriculum. Um, they said it was, it was over by the, the 19th and i tried to send an email out to sandy uh, but i didn't get anything in return so gabe if you're listening uh <laughs> yeah, I, you want I'm in just, i want in that's right i think i think um so i think that uh the enrollment might be closed for this time around but <laughs> but you should definitely i mean like when it opens up again get in there right get in while you can the other option too is to is to also um you might be able to join up, just join the Monday night groups, possibly. That might be something that's, that is available. That I'm not sure about because there's, um, there's just, there's just coming and hanging out on Monday nights. And then there's also the course that, you know, that was the enrollment part, you know, was getting involved in the course, getting, you know, like, so every week there's, they roll out new, um, new chapter for us, you know, for you to read. And then there's also, um, there can be webinars, there can be, uh, you know, replays of other, you know, exercises that have been done as well as, uh, as well as other assignments that are, you know, all of them are related to the topic of the week. So it really is, again, just a, um, for the, for the price, you know, I know Stephen has, has uh, spoken to this in the past, like for the price of, of everything you get, it's a, it's it's a pretty amazing, you know, package. Um, so can't recommend it enough. But if you can join on the Monday nights, you know, um, I, I think it's amazing. Saying he hasn't oh. taken the link down yet, but he's going to take it down today. So he said, "Do it now." Oh, oh. heck yeah! Do now. Don't don't do it yet, Gabe. Don't do it. I got some emails to run. I'm, I'm on there. The link is still Gabe, live until I get to it today. So do it now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that sounds like a, a sounds like an imperative. Um, and then creature yeah. said, "Yo, know, Gabe is always listening." <laughs> <laughs> I know. I knew. That's why I said that. <laughs> you can always, uh, you can always count on Gabe. Gabe, our tech uh, guru. <laughs> Yes. Um, so anyway, I, uh, 
I think that it's um, no matter what, right? Get with get with a group and draw, just like we're doing here, you know. Well, not today so much, <laughs> but get with a group that you're drawing with that that um, that you can share with, and that you can um, and you feel that sense of community. I think I miss it when I when I don't have it, right? Um, it's always something that I gravitated towards. And so that's why I appreciate, I'm so grateful to this one. I'm out, bro. It's exactly. Uh, all right. See ya. Um, oh, no, no, no. It's not exactly. You, right? oh. uh, <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, see ya. <laughs> like, all right, well, fine, I, done anyway. I was, yeah, that was enough out of me because, you know, I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just like expressing to you, um, you know, my hope that you're, that you're enjoying uh, our time together and they're getting something from it. Um, and that you just keep working on your drawing because it's going to be, you know, that's, that's what the whole premise of this, of this enterprise is about, right? It's just to share our love of drawing with each other. And then of course, with, with the audience, it's in mm -hmm. the hopes that they're going to get into it too. Almost, and it's just valuable, almost, you know, um, yeah. to, to just have, a person that is just so experienced in art, you know, because I knew I was going to be able to talk to you about, you know, just my kind of relapse into not drawing, and you knew that you would probably have something valuable to offer, and you did. And now I'm going to go back to drawing and feel good about it. Good. I I think I honestly I feel like there's something that's really valuable about us, you know, doing this program and and you know making it available to people because it's. It's really, it's strange, but almost, I, I don't know, I guess I haven't figured out the percentage, but I have this really high percentage of people who I tattoo who like, they come out to me and tell me that they have also, they've done tattoos, right? That they, oh. they bought, they bought a kid off of Amazon and they've done it on themselves or they've done it on their friends or whatever, right? And I'm like, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not one to discourage it like getting yeah. into the biz, but I think there's a way that you can go about it that could be, be beneficial. You could benefit from, from working hard, getting into a shop, learning how to draw. Those are ways that you can, you know, of course you could, you know, you could just go at it and hack away and like, you'll learn a thing or two eventually. Right. And give the rest there's of a us whole a lot of there. Right. And, and you want to do it safely, right? You want to, you don't want to get people sick. You don't want to hurt people. Right, you don't want to hurt yourself. Off. It's it can be, yeah. You don't want the skin to fall off. <laughs> That's terrible. So, um, so anyway, there, 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 there are effective ways to go about it, but it's it's tough. There's a barrier to entry that you know sometimes it's depends on where you live, right? Depends on who you have access to. It can be challenging. So, you know, again, having spaces like this where you can learn about you know, learn about basics, fundamentals of art, and then also learn a little bit more about the tattoo industry. It's a good place to start. And then hopefully, if you really want interested in doing tattoos, you get into with a good shop. And, um, you know, you got to look, right? You got to find find somewhere that it feels right, feels like quality. And then it can happen. You know what I mean? It can be something that you can, you can dedicate yourself to. So... Working for Amber, right? You're, you know, you're doing it. And, uh -huh. you know. Go, yeah, Amber! I'm so happy for you, Amber. Yeah. You deserve this. This is so awesome. Fucking now that's fun. what I keep having to work on, remembering that I deserve it. Yeah, yeah. You, you done put in the work. You know what I'm saying? You got the years behind you. You're going to go further than you ever imagined you could just because of all I've the work. I've been wanting to be a tattoo artist for 26 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, here, yeah, here it is. I did the right thing. I got a real job to support my daughter and get the 401k and benefits. And, but she's 26 with her own kids. It's Amber's turn. <laughs> now you're living the dream. Yeah. Yes. Right. <laughs> That's yes. the best. No, <laughs> no, it sounds like uh, it sounds like um, again we're here we're here for each other and and we're we're getting to experience like you know um, 
the each other's journeys. And so I think that's that makes it even more, um, you know, like important. So uh, it's it's a privilege, you know what I mean. And so I'm I'm really grateful for everybody. Um, and so, but it's time to get to work, right? Let's get let's get to it. Yeah, let's. Uh, yeah, thanks thanks to the chat. Yeah, thanks to the chat. So great to have you all here. Um, let's do some sign offs and then we'll uh, we'll call it a day. Next week we're gonna do some cool color theory. So. Uh, so I hope you're excited for that. Please join us next week. But yeah, uh, well, Stephen, are you? If you're still here, you can give us a sign off. If not, if you are, uh, you are indisposed. We. I'm here. Is. Hey, cool. Hey. So um, thanks for having me, Stephen. I tattoo you in Virginia, and I'm Graham at Stephen Jesson. Thank you, Stephen. It was really great to have you here. And then, you know, I think you really kind of kicked us off. You, you really got us kicked off in a really great way to, this morning. So, so thank you for uh, thank you for coming, and thanks for you know, I don't know, just being a part of this. We love it. So, thanks for um, having me, Kyle. Yeah, yeah, of course, man. Kyle, let's have you sign off, bud. Um, my name is Kyle Olson. Um, I tattoo out of Trinity Art Collective in Tucson, Arizona. Um, if you want to get a hold of me, I am available on Instagram at Olson underscore tattoos, O-L-S-O-N. It's uh, such a pleasure to have you here, Kyle. Like, you know, like, so check out Kyle's work. He is an exceptional artist. And, you know, again, Aww. it's like you have a lot of experience. And, you know, so it's all, it's just, uh, it really is, it's a, it's a, it's a privilege that you, uh, you know, that you're here with us and stuff. And then also, you know, your insight. You know, oh, you're very humble, dude. Like very down to earth, and so it's just like I don't know. I just it's it's like super cool. So thank you so much for coming, and thanks for uh, you know for all your you know all your contributions and stuff. So well, thanks for having you, me. Probably see you tonight. No, no, of course it, it's yeah always welcome. But yeah, we'll see you tonight at the at the drawing group. So yeah, 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 yeah. Well, <laughs> Get this done last minute, you know. Yeah, <laughs> mine still needs a little bit of work too, but mm -hmm. yeah, we'll see. All right, thank you. Elise, let's have you. Uh, hello, I'm Elise Morrow. I am a 3D modeling major that, and I'm going to be graduating in seven weeks. Um, so wish me luck. <laughs> uh, you, <laughs> you can find me at Elise Morrow Visuals on uh, Instagram and ArtStation. Excellent. Yeah. Again, it's uh, well. I've known, I've known at least probably the longest, uh, you know, in this in our group. Um, so I've got a chance to really see, you know, you develop your art career and everything that you've been doing. It's um, you've. It's, I'm so I'm so like proud of you, <laughs> and so I'm so happy that you're graduating. It's uh, it's a it's a real incredible accomplishment. So. Um, so yeah, hang in there, stick it out. You're almost done. And um, can't wait to see that final portfolio. I'm like super duper excited for it. So. Cool, thank, thank you. Guys. Yeah, thank you. of course. So, All right, Amber, let's have your sign off. I'm Amber Morgan from Mays Landing, New Jersey. I'm an apprentice in Egg Harbor City at Luxury Tattoos and Permanent Cosmetics. And I am Amber Morgan on all social platforms. Outstanding. I, uh, um, Amber showed up this morning and was like, you know, was telling me, told me that you weren't feeling well, but you made it anyway. And, and yeah, otherwise, you know, okay. for the past week. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. So, well, I, I'm just so, I don't know. I was like, I'm, I'm so glad you could make it today and I hope you feel better soon. Um, again, it's really I great that feeling yeah. a little better. It's got some blood moving. I feel yeah. a little more normal. Thank you so much for all of your uh, contributions and advice today. Uh, you, I thought you were really sharp with, uh, you know, with our analysis, right? We were analyzing all the, all the images and stuff. So it's, it's, I think it's really, really, um, it's great to see that, you know. I, I think I, I'm developing a more critical eye now. I've actually taken good. a lot of this stuff internally and I recognize it now. Excellent. Yeah, excellent. I'm, I'm. Well, I think that's clear, right? So I'm glad that you also recognize it in yourself because that's super duper important. But uh, 
But anyway, I, again, I just, I was, yeah, you, well, you put in the work and so you deserve it again. Um, yeah. Congratulations on getting your space. Uh, that's super duper. Can't wait to, you know, can't wait to start seeing the, the tattoos come out of there soon. So I can't wait we'll, to we'll stick, stick my with ass it. in that space and work. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Amber. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Spirit, give us your sign off. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, I just want to say congratulations again to Amber, um, uh, Elise. I'm really excited for you guys on the new beginnings. You guys are going to do fantastic. Um, you can find me at Black Widow Tattoo in Columbia, South Carolina. My Instagram is Tattoos by Spirit. TikTok is Tattoos by Spirit. And my website is TattoosbySpirit.com. Nice. Outstanding. Yeah. No, that's great. And I'm so glad that you're, uh, you know, you're really enjoying your new space, your new colleagues and stuff, Spirit. I think it's, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, just like you got this great energy and stuff. And I'm, you know, so I'm, I don't know, it's, I think that's inspiring too. You know what I mean? In its way. So Word. happy for you, dude. Thanks, bro. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Keep up the good work. Seriously. Um, well, you've, uh, you've joined us for another fantastic episode of Drawing for Tattooers. Um, if you're still here, make sure to hit the like and subscribe. Uh, but also uh, be sure to, to join us. Uh, uh, this upcoming May 19th, well, I guess it actually will be May, May 20th at Hell City. Drawing for Tattooers will be live at, uh, at the Reinventing the Tattoo table. So um, anyway, love to see you there. If you're at Hell City, stop by and say hello. Um, I'm James Wisdom. You can find me on Instagram at Tattooing Wisdom, as well as my website, TattooingWisdom.com. Um, it's been a fantastic episode. I really enjoyed everybody's contributions, and um, you know, it's going to be like it's going to be even better, right? So, um, thank you all so much. Uh, happy drawing, and uh, we'll see you uh, next stream.